So I've got this Samsung Plasma TV. It's a model PN50A550. And the suffix is S1FXZA. That's Sam1 Frank X-Ray Zebra Adam. And the problem is, well, it's working pretty good right at the moment, as you can see. But uh, sometimes you'll just, just be watching it and it'll go out. Or the picture will break up into a bunch of lines and the audio will become distorted. And so let me show you what that I have uh, narrowed it down to real quick. So it's not too bad, but right now what I've noticed is if you look at these two coils right here, uh, under each one there's a little IC chip and it's a uh, switching power supply. And it converts the 12 volts from the main board into different voltages for the set to use. Now the bottom one reads about 1.1, which is fairly accurate, that's where I should see it. Now the top one reads 3.3 at the moment, but just a minute ago, and maybe it'll do it while I have the camera here, uh, it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. It was down to about 2.8 volts, and that's a definite problem. If it gets much below about 2.9, uh, typically I see problems with this. Uh, it's staying pretty steady right now. It's uh, at a voltage where the set can definitely operate fine at this moment. But like I said, if it if it drops much lower, then uh, we have some definite problems. So um, I've had this problem, like I said, in the past. You know, I did a little research. I actually found a replacement kit uh, from Shop Jimmy to repair this problem that comes with all the parts that you need. Okay, so here's the kit. Here's what it comes with. There's uh, three components in here. One is a small capacitor, a little surface mount, and we've got two IC chips. Uh, the capacitor is C102 and the ICs are IC101 and IC1203. So here's the kit available from Shop Jimmy. It's under $20, so it's a really good deal. And it covers uh, multiple problems. It covers an audio issue, which we're not having. And it does cover uh, the problem that we are having where the TV turns on, has no video, and shuts off, or it may actually work sometimes. So um, I, I think ours is right on the verge of failing. It's not really gotten as bad as some may actually be. So real quick, there's two of these chips on the bottom of this board. And now this is the one that we're interested in right here. It's IC101, and then this is the capacitor that we need to replace as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with my heat gun. And I'm just gonna use it on low. It's almost ready to move, I can see the solder. Yeah, I don't think you can see it on the camera, but on the far side, it's starting to move. There we go. We can just lift it right off the board. Now, this chip, as I recall, the last time I changed one, the chip actually had a heat sink under it. There we go. Let me turn it over so you can see the bottom side of it. So next, I'm just going to prep the board. I'm just going to add fresh solder to it here. And I'm going to have to remove that big ball of solder in the middle. I don't want that much in the middle as well. So if you don't have a solder sucker, you can use solder wick in that case. And the solder wick comes in a roll. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that. And it just wicks it up. You want to leave just a little tiny bit left. That way the new part can adhere to the board successfully. And I'm just going to remove the excess solder from these two pads as well. I'll be adding the capacitor just a little bit later. Okay, so I've cleaned the area of the circuit board with a little bit of acetone. That cleans off all the residual flux. Next, I'm going to add some fresh flux to the circuit board, and this helps the solder flow a little bit easier. Next, I have my new chip ready, so I'm just going to try to very carefully place it in position and just get it close here. Next, I'm going to go ahead 
and begin heating it once again. It may want to walk a little bit. Hopefully if it does, I can get it recentered. Let's see if I can get this light in a little bit better location for you. That's not too bad. Well, I can see it's already becoming molten. When it's all done, what you can actually do is you can move it and it'll bounce back into place. See that? As I push it away, it actually comes back onto the pads. So that's how I know I successfully have all my pads ready to go. Okay, so I have the capacitor in place. Let's see if I can get it to take a little bit of solder. Sometimes these tips are a little bit magnetic and they'll try to suck the capacitor onto it. There we go, it's pretty good. It's crooked just slightly, but not too terribly bad. Now I'm gonna wash the board again get all the residual flux off of it. And I'm just using some acetone. It works very good to remove the residual flux. There we go, looks very nice now. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Okay, here's the set after I have the chip change. I want to do a quick voltage measurement for you here. And you can see it's at 3.345. It's holding much more steady. Last time it was wavering by, what what was it, a tenth of a volt or so. And it had dropped down to, like I said, 2.8, 2.9 volts while I was troubleshooting the set. So we're definitely holding much more steady on this one. This one should still be at the 1.1 volts. It's doing very good. Okay, here we go. Set's all working. Everything's great. I've turned it on and off several times. I've been monitoring that voltage. It's been holding very steady at about 3.34 volts as opposed to uh, dropping down like it was before. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video replacing the IC on the main board and the uh, Samsung PN50A550 Plasma TV. Hopefully with your help, your support, we can keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter, at NorCal715. Yeah, everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.